this video, we are going to show you how to set up a gas generator. This is very useful for the preparation of gases in situ, when lecture bottles are unavailable or too dangerous to store. The gas generator here is basically a KIPS apparatus made from regular ground glass parts. If you're interested in KIPS apparatus, we'll provide a link in the description to a great video from Periodic Videos. So let's take a look at our setup. On the bottom, you can see a three-necked round bottom flask. To this, a pressure equalizing addition funnel is added. To the left neck, the gas cock is attached with the tap being closed. We'll explain this later. Lastly, a drying tube is connected to the right neck of the flask. The principle of this gas generator is very simple. Most of the time, you can generate a gas from a liquid and a solid reactant. So the liquid reactant is charged into the addition funnel and allowed to slowly drip onto the solid reactant in the round bottom flask. By adjusting the drip rate, the rate of the gas flow is adjusted. It is also possible to use two liquids or one liquid with a catalyst with this setup. So you might ask, why a pressure utilizing addition funnel is required? The answer is simple. In order to be able to drip a liquid in a controllable manner, the pressure above the liquid in the addition funnel and in the round bottom flask has to be equal. If it is not, no liquid will drop or a lot of liquid will drop at the same time. This can blow up the whole apparatus. However, there is a simple way to improvise a pressure equalizing addition funnel from a regular one. Just connect one neck of the round bottom flask to the top of the addition funnel. This will basically substitute the glass tube at the outside of the regular funnel. This glass tube is actually called Marius pipe. Okay, enough talking. We'll show you the gas generator in action now. To start, we are going to generate some oxygen gas and burn sulfur in it. We'll then lead the sulfur dioxide gas into a wash bottle containing water. This will give us a solution of sulfurous acid. To start, add a few milliliters of 35% hydrogen peroxide to the addition funnel. The exact volume depends on the amount of gas you want to generate. You can calculate the expected volume of gas using simple stoichiometry. To the round bottom flask, add in a few crystals of potassium permanganate. This will catalytically decompose our hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen gas. Before we burn the sulfur, We'll just lead the oxygen into another flask, so that we can show the classic splint test for oxygen. Okay, we are set up and ready. Slowly open the tap and begin dripping the perhydrol onto the potassium permanganate. The wash bottle here serves as bubble counter, so that we can get an idea of the rate of the gas flow. The flask in front of it prevents any backflow of liquid, if we would encounter pressure problems. In the beginning, the air has to be purged from the apparatus. So be patient, discard the first milliliters of gas and then collect the oxygen gas in the flask. Okay, if we think that the flask is filled, we close the tap to stop the gas float. Let's switch of the lights and introduce a glowing splint into the flask. This is the classic test for oxygen. We have now set up for the preparation of sulfurous acid. This time we attached the drying tube in order to prevent water to condense inside the combustion chamber. Speaking of which, the combustion chamber is made from fused silica glass. Let's fill a porcelain boat with some flowers of sulfur and introduce it into the chamber.
after everything is connected, let's start the flow of oxygen once again. Next, we heat the combustion chamber to light the sulfur. As you can see, the sulfur burns with a brilliant blue flame. Let's enjoy this a little bit. Okay, if you think you had enough, stop the gas generator. After everything has cooled down, we could open up the apparatus. However, there's still a lot of sulfur dioxide gas in it. Even in a fumed hood, you don't want to blow this gas into the atmosphere. So here is a neat trick. Remember the gas got on the round bottom flask? Let's attach an air pump to this and purge the entire apparatus for a few minutes. The residual sulfur dioxide will thus be forced through the gas washing bottle, where it dissolves. This might be an overkill for sulfur dioxide, but when working with carbon monoxide or chlorine gas, this technique is mandatory. Let's take a look at the gas washing bottle. It contains the solution of sulfurous acid, H2SO3. Thus, the solution is strongly acidic. Neutralizing it would result in sulfites and hydrogen sulfites which are important reducing agents. If you're interested in preparing sulfuric acid, you can add some hydrogen peroxide. This will oxidize the sulfurous acid to sulfuric acid. By boiling down the solution, you can obtain azeotropic sulfuric acid. We might make a separate video on various methods of producing sulfuric acid in a later video. We also plan to show you the contact process, as it is applied industrially for the preparation of sulfuric acid. Let us know in the comments, if you are interested.